tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Sheree Morgan Faulkner, AIFD, and we're here at Always Fine Flowers. I'm sure all of you know that. Um, but thank you for coming tonight uh, through the holidays. So uh, we're gonna have lots of fun with foliage. We're gonna create an incredible centerpiece, just like this one. I'm gonna teach you how to do this tonight. I would like to thank Washington Floral Service, EC Flowers, and Mother Nature for all of the products that we will be using tonight. So um, I'm super excited about that. We are gonna start to talk about foliage before we actually start to talk about our project. Uh, can anyone tell me where you might find or source foliage? backyard your backyard that's right that's right right here we have my backyard so we have some viburnum some red twig dogwood um, any other places any other guesses roadside yeah. roadside yeah that's right exactly you you know this answer don't you <laughs> so um, when we find a foliage or a flower that we don't know the name of it we call it roadsidea indicia so <laughs> crummy old horse tails can become Equicidium roadsidea indicia. If you um, think about how you can manipulate and play with different foliages, um, they can be uh, used in their natural light as they would, or you can bend fold and manipulate them. So yes, roadsidea indicia, or forest foraging like salal or mossy sticks. We break for cool sticks. Moss, moss, I love, I love moss. So I know us Pacific Northwesterners are always like, ooh, those are some cool sticks. Um, anywhere else? Any other guesses? Your local florist? <laughs> oh, or wholesaler or farmer's market. Exactly. Yes, definitely. Local growers, things like that. Um, so those are some of the expected places. Um, there's two unexpected places. Can anyone guess two other unexpected places? Neighbor's yard, yes, exactly. So your yard or somebody else's yard. Um, I would do that with permission. Uh, I would not go to the Forest Service and start clipping away. Also, do not go to Taco Bell at midnight and decide to prune their PRS bushes. We don't recommend that either. So um, I tell you to refrain from that. Uh, so this is here at Holly's Fine Flowers, but you can also find this at um, home improvement stores, plant departments. So you can actually cut the foliage off of indoor house plants. Um, one time I bought a big palm uh, and took it home and butchered it because I knew I probably wouldn't be able to keep it alive. So um, <laughs> sometimes when I can't find uh, palm at my local wholesaler, then I will go to the plant departments at home improvement stores and things like that. Um, so let's see here. Now, I also, again, please purchase the plant before you clip. One lady at a class said, do you bring your clippers to Home Depot oh, 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 and clip from the bushes? I say, no, ma'am, we have to purchase them first. And yeah. then, then you can clip on them at home. Um, one last one. This is probably one of my most favorite and unexpected. So where do you think this came from? Grocery, grocery store, store produce aisle. Yes, the wilds of the produce aisle. This wonderful dinosaur kale. Look at that texture. I just love it and the color. So those are some different places and things that you might be able to find your foliage. Let's talk about, so we talked about where you can find your foliage. Why might you be drawn to a piece of foliage? What, what about it might you like? Texture. Texture that's right. Color, color exactly. And then one other another main ingredient shape form that's right exactly color shape texture form um, whether it's something very smooth and fuzzy to something very rough um, something sleek we have the teardrop shapes the round shapes the different color variegations from you know something very lime green to something very dark and then something kind of bluish green in between so that's right shape form texture that's why you might be drawn to foliage for its natural characteristics. Um, and then the other thing that I hope to inspire you with today is that on what you can do with foliage. So these are some of the things here. Let me move this out of the way. We'll put you here for now. So these are some of the things you can do with your foliage. Um, so again, enjoy it and use it in its natural state or bend, fold, manipulate, cut, pierce, weave, braid, all kinds of different things. Um, I'm not gonna show you these tonight because we are doing this incredible star with the hollow leaves, uh, but I have a YouTube channel coming up in the new year, so if you wanna learn on how to do some of these, take a look at that. Um, who likes to knit at home? Or, or what do you do in front of the TV at home? 
watch TV. <laughs> right, right. Um, some people like to do crossword puzzles or net or crochet, that type of thing. Um, I love to weave. I call it weaver fever. So anything that I can think of. Um, some people really love to do corsage work. I love to weave leaves. Weaver oh, fever, that's my thing. I love oh, it. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. So those are some of the design mechanics that you can do with your foliages. Wow, okay. I, I think we're gonna dive into our project. Ready? Okay. So tonight this piece is called uh, The Stars Are Brightly Shining in Honor of You Ladies as well as the Bright Light of the Holiday Season. Um, this piece here, I'll show you how to do these. This is a, a, a folding mechanic technique. It's a lot of fun. So it looks like this on one side, but it actually looks even more intricate on the other side. So isn't that fun? And I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a moment. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is different design styles. So this piece here is very modern, full, round, lush, not a lot of um, void spaces. And of course it wouldn't be one of my classes if you didn't add an extra fun foliage twist, right? So you, you gotta jazz it up a little bit. But can anyone guess who made this style popular in the 90s? She's a matriarch of the creative community. Martha Stewart, that's right, oh. yes, Martha Stewart. So this design style um, became very popular with Martha Stewart, um, away from the traditional fountain. Um, but I also wanted to show you that not only can you put your stars in something like the piece that we're going to do tonight, you can also put it in something that is a little more artistic and grand. This is a formal linear design. It's usually characterized by a uh, void or negative space, as well as lots of strong lines, very strong line movement, as well as lots of varying textures and depth. It has a lot of depth to it. So it has the void negative space, whereas this one is a very full and lush, but isn't that pretty with the stars in that piece too? I probably can't see it very well. But how pretty is that? So you can use these stars and lots of different design techniques. It's very versatile. And I am going to show you how to create them right now. And then I'll show you up close and personal when we get in the back room to do our project. Ooh, small spaces. Thank you, ma'am. You know what? I have to tell you too. Now, we were talking about texture and shape. Look at this piece of Japonica Cristata. Oh, yeah. Isn't that stunning? So this is actually a, a genetic mutation that happened in the Cristata plant, and then now they're breeding it to do this genetic mutation. Oh. So it was a flaw, and it was so cool. So now they're actually trying to breed it to do this. And it takes this piece here, will probably take about 15 years to do this. So it is pretty special, and I just thought, oh my gosh, ladies, we have to talk. It looks almost like a staghorn fern or a stag or something like that. It's so neat. Wow. Texture and shape on that one. Oh, stunning. I love it. Okay, let's do our fun foliage twist. So this is hala or pandanus. These particular leaves came from Thailand, but they also can come from Hawaii, tropical places. Um, this one's really nice. It's the Melikaliki Maka design because it's mixing temperate flowers with tropical flowers. Very tropical nouveau. Okay, so I'm gonna split my leaf down the center. And it's going to have a little bit of a ridge in the center of it that you're gonna wanna kinda shave off with your scissors or knife. Can you guys kinda see what I'm doing? Till it's pretty flat. And we have band-aids in case anybody gets a leaf cut. I've done that too. And when you do split your leaf down the middle, you might actually get it perfectly in the center where you don't have a ridge. So if you're like, I don't have a ridge, that's okay. That's actually even better than what I'm doing. Yeah. So we're gonna take the tips and create a knot. And we have lots of hollow leaves in case there's any breakage or frustration. Okay, so we have a knot. Does everybody see that? We are going to snip the ends. Did I grab my clippers? I don't know. I'm gonna use my knife to actually cut the tails off. So now I have a very tight little knot. Um, the, 
one of the, the the beginning part of this is the hardest. You want to make sure that your knot or your tail ends are pointing to the right. Do we have any left-handed folks in the crowd? Nope. Okay. Tressa is ambidextrous, so in case Woo! you're having issues, <laughs> yes, she can help with that tonight. Um, but you want to make sure your knot is to the right, and then the first leaf you bend at a 90 degree angle. Can everybody see how I bent that at a 90 degree angle? And then I'm taking this and I'm creating almost like a little breast cancer awareness flag or awareness flag. And I'm starting to create a tip, a second tip of my star. So this is the first tip. This is the second tip. You take the leaf behind and do that again. Also, the more... Um, time these leaves spend in your hands, the more pliable they are because the heat helps the fibers break down a little bit. So I'm just going to continue to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to make six points and it's okay if they're not perfect because the next layer will start to catch them. So right now, the other part you want to make sure of is your original knot. You want to make sure it's tucked on top of what you're working with. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means my seventh is going to actually slip over my first original knot. And they don't fit perfectly like a glove. It just, you know, just takes some manipulation to kind of tuck the tips in over each other. Can everybody kind of see what, how I'm creating the spiral? So I'm tucking it right over its coned neighbor or counterpart. These would be a lot of fun to do with ribbon or paper too and make a garland. There, you can do this, if you split this into four pieces instead of two, then you can make the stars even smaller. That'd make a pretty garland. And there's no right or wrong, meaning how many um, actual times you go around. It's just kind of when the leaves stop. So see how this one is not gonna work real easy? I'm gonna do it, it's gonna, there we go. Okay, that was the last one for sure on that row. Is this one gonna do it? Yeah, it'll do it. Pull and tug and pull and tug. Okay, so this is what the front will look like at this moment. And then the back looks like that, a little more woven. And see how it has that concave shape? That um, helps the tips grab onto each other, so don't be alarmed if it's not flat. And then you're gonna take your actual scissors, I'm gonna use my knife, and I'm just cutting off the crummy tails. And when I have my scissors, it ends up being a little bit cleaner. And that's how you make the star. Isn't that fun? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, any questions before we go start a project? Yes. They do dry. Yes, they dry very well. Now, the color doesn't totally hold is exactly, but they don't brown. It almost just kind of fades but you still see the color variation you can do this with new zealand flax too that grows in yards around the local area if you don't have hala on hand or that type of thing i've done it with my flax at home that's kind of fun um any other questions nope okay well again thank you so much for coming tonight i hope i've inspired you with some new fun design techniques tricks and maybe some foliage knowledge and uh let's Go dive into some holiday fun with foliage. Let's go do our projects. Thank you, ladies. So excited.